Welcome to the first episode in a series where we take a look at the best and worst moments from horror movies. Now, lucky for me and hopefully lucky for you at home, today we'll be looking at one of my new favorite movies of all time, 2020's Host. It is a Shudder original, so you can currently find this on there, so I suggest going to check it out first, as this will contain spoilers. Directed by Rob Savage, written by Jed Shepard and Gemma Hurley, gifting us a Zoom-filled ghost flick, in which we are introduced into a truly wonderful cast and get some interesting kills, so let's take a look at it. We're introduced to our cast pretty early on, one by one, as they trickle into the call, which means we get to meet Caroline's lovely dad, Pat. You have got to love Pat. But, unfortunately, that also means we get to meet Ginny, and Ginny sucks. Well, it's her. She's so fucking painful, guys. I mean, they said it best. We're starting off with an early negative, but I can assure you that is one of the few in this movie. One of the best things about this movie is the cast. You can tell their friends outside of the movie and it just makes it feel more genuine. Hats off to all the actresses involved. As the movie goes on and on, their job becomes harder and harder. As their characters become more distressed, but they constantly rise to the occasion. The epitome of this is their astral plane game, where they take a shot every time the medium says, well, you know. Now here's a horror fun fact for you. During the filming of Host, Rob Savage, the director, would show the cast different horror clips to get them hyped up for scenes. Now a selection of these were The Conjuring 2. There was a few different ones from that. The Eye, Lake Mungo, Martyrs. Ah, there was a few of us on the list. I'm curious if you had to do the same, if you had to pick some of the scariest moments from horror, which horror movies would you pick? Rob did also on his Twitter go on to say he thought that Wreck was one of the scariest horror moments of all time, which is hard to disagree with. I can't think of many moments that hit me quite as hard as that did. So perfect question for you guys in the comments, your scariest horror moment. I would say Wreck or possibly Insidious. I think that's possibly the scariest film I've ever seen until I saw this one because this one is definitely up there. One of my favorite things about this cast is how interactive it's been on social media. Now with any film, the cast, the directors, the writers, they get to retweet stuff and they'll have, they'll have a duty to put out something, but these guys are on another level. Literally anything about the movie, they're interacting with, they're thanking people, they're retweeting, their timelines are just full of host praise. That's what I love about the horror community and that's what I love about this cast in particular it shows a true passion for the part things go from worse to worse as their medium is pulled away via technical difficulties just after we get the defining moment of the whole movie it's the equivalent of team iron man versus team cap edward and jacob in twilight it's team Gemma or team Haley. whose fault is this whole thing on one hand Haley did suggest doing it and she even said she had experiences before but Gemma did technically break the rules and shows the spirits no respect. Team Haley for life. Things continue to ramp up, but the first time we see the spirit, and one of my favourite parts of the movie, is where Caroline stumbles upon whatever this is. And that image will stay with me. It's very reminiscent of the viral video which actually got this movie made, in which Rob played a prank on the cast. Basically, he made them think there was someone in his loft and as he went to investigate, a jump scare was waiting. Very reminiscent to something like Wreck, the Edinburgh, when there's the child in the loft. It's crazy to think that not only did they make that short during lockdown, they made this whole entire film while quarantined, which led to the actresses having to do some of their own stunts, makeup. It's just an incredible feat for everyone involved. It's one of those things where the creation of the horror is akin to the horror itself. You've got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the conditions, there were long days, there were hot days, there was people passing out, it was just unbearable. We've got the Blair Witch Project, which when it came out was thought to be real. And now we've got this where it's, they've tried so hard to make this passion project during quarantine. I don't know if any of them could ever truly believe how big it's become. 
because I do believe it's the best of 2020 and one of the best we've had in a long time. From this point, things jump exponentially as character after character is visited by the spirit, leading to our next great moment, the silence of the scene, signaling to Redina, and finally the fall of her boyfriend. Emma is unfortunately next to be visited, but she's having a pretty rough time of it. She is, however, getting to show off some quality horror tropes. I say quality tropes because I actually really enjoy them. The use of current technology via filters, using things like flour to reveal the ghost. It's stuff we've seen before, but we don't see enough of. This scene is also the best instance I've seen of it. The audio cues, the sharp and quick movements from the spirit, everything comes together perfectly. The only thing I could draw comparison to with these audio cues would be in Halloween. In particular, when Tommy's leaving school and he runs into Michael, and we get that really eerie sound that just makes you feel uncomfortable. They do that well here as well. Another one of my favourite things about this movie is the tension it builds and slow crawls towards reveals, using clever filming techniques mixed with reactions from the cast. It really has to be seen. This isn't sponsored in any way by Shudder, but you need to download Shudder and you need to watch this movie. It's truly staggering how good it's been made under these extreme circumstances. I mean, the best thing I've done during quarantine is probably interviewing the host cast, which you can click up here if you haven't seen it yet. And that is honestly one of my favorite things I've ever done. Other than that, in quarantine, I've not really got anywhere near this amount done. Another thing the film does really well is juxtaposing really dark moments with laughs. Normally from characters not believing what's happening, or in this case, Teddy returning to the call, not realising what he's seeing is actually happening. As he walks into scene with this poltergeist looking motherfucker. Now one shame, I'm not going to give it a worse because I don't think it necessarily takes away from the movie. In fact, it probably helps it. But I did love Ted when we're introduced to him. And unfortunately, much like Mickey from Scream 2, he disappears for the next 40 odd minutes arriving at the end just in time to be killed. Honestly, it's kind of a compliment that how much I like Teddy. We do only get the few scenes at the start and at the end. So the fact that he had such an impact on me, yeah, it's just massive praise to you, dude. You did what you needed to do. You sort of left and left the cast to it in the middle, which I think helped the film massively. Although I am super curious how, if you're in lockdown, if you're in quarantine, how possibly was the Ginny kill done if anyone can explain that anyone from the cast by chance sees this video or Teddy himself literally if anyone knows I'm so curious I know you can do so much and you had people to sort of aid you and I think the actor is actually a stunt performer himself I just don't know how you pulled that scene off there is so much know-how behind that the fact that that can be put over a screen to you in quarantine and explained and you're able to pull that off one of my favorite parts of the movie not just because it's Ginny dying but just the effort gone into that scene alone is is praiseworthy finally we finish where it ends as they slowly approach the creature hitting it with constant flashes i'm reminded of the light bulb sound effect in texas chainsaw massacre which is never a bad thing unless we're talking about the later films when it's not always as well used. And finally, we're hit with the last camera flash, which reveals, well, I'm not gonna spoil that. I honestly believe this is one of the best horror films of 2020, and it would probably go into my top 10 list, maybe of all time. This is an absolute must see for any horror fans. The cast is brilliant on and off the screen. Everything they've achieved is noteworthy. I think it's a true, testament to wanting to create something that they've been able to do that during lockdown if you're keeping count at home that is eight best moments and two worst moments do remember this is all for fun i have picked out my favorite parts but this is not a ranking in any way although maybe we'll rank the films anyway we see we'll go through every horror film and we will see which gets the most best moments i kind of wish i'd pick more for this now but we're down the rabbit hole. So if you think I've missed any out or missed any worst moments, drop them in the comments below. 
I am still evolving this format, so you've, if you've got any criticisms, any suggestions, let me know them down below as well. But that is all we've got for the first episode. Hopefully you join us for part two, where we'll be looking at Scare Package, another Shudder original.